Blind spot sensors do exactly what they sound like they do. They monitor your blind spots to help you know that there's a car that you might not be able to visually see, usually some type of alert on your mirror or somewhere in that area. However, even something simple as a rear fascia replacement will require you to recalibrate the blind spot sensor. This vehicle here had the fascia removed and reinstalled. And again, no damage was found to the blind spot sensor itself, but per Mazda, we still need to calibrate it. We're gonna go through that next. My VCI is already hooked up to my DLC under the dash. Let's go ahead and get into diagnostics. We're gonna auto ID the VIN. Of course, we'll cycle the ignition here in just a moment. 2020 Mazda 6 Grand Touring. We're gonna cycle the ignition real quick per the instructions on our ADOS link. First thing we're gonna do with any ADOS calibrations, you always wanna start with a pre-scan. We're gonna go ahead and go into read DTCs, select all, and we're gonna to check to make sure that we have no DTCs that would be related to the actual blind spot monitor that could cause a problem for us to calibrate this. So I'm gonna let it go through all the modules right now. It'll also save a report to our ADOS link that I can print off or email a copy of that to our customers later. Our scan has completed and it is saved to our ADOS link and you can see I don't have any DTCs related to the blind spot monitor. So we can go ahead and move on with our calibration. I'll head back to the main screen here and go to ADOS calibration and we're gonna select blind spot monitoring as soon as it's highlighted, which it is now. You'll notice I don't have the DOS 3000 rack with me right now. Almost everything I need except the reflector stand is on this stand right here. We're gonna go ahead and focus on the left rear sensor on this vehicle. Right or left, the procedure is the same. Your measurements will just be different based on the side that you're doing. We're just gonna go ahead and go through the left one for demonstration purpose right now. The required equipment is highlighted right here, the reflector stand, a distance laser, uh, the laser holder itself, uh, some masking tape, a plumb bob and maybe a marker are also some things that you might wanna have on hand to do this, depending on the floor that you're using. So we know this is used to adjust the blind spot monitoring system. Make sure the physical alignment of the sensor is okay. Now we just had the bumper off and the, re and the fascia off and the fascia reinstalled. There was no damage to the actual sensor or bracket itself. They did check and verify that it is installed within OEM specifications, so we shouldn't have any problems. If you had to replace the sensor and the bracket, make sure that it is done to OEM specifications, which you can find in the service manual. Again, perform calibration when the sensor is reinstalled. Uh, the sensor or nearby parts are impacted in a collision, which we are dealing with right now. Remember your required preconditions as well. Good lighting, lots of space. You'll see I have a big amount of space that I'm gonna to need to do this, as you will when you're in the shop. Tires set to correct PSI, None, no unnecessary load in the vehicle, uh, no shadows, all of those things. Make sure there's no metal objects around or anything as well, which we have a good wide open space. And as you can see here, how much space you truly need to be able to do this. And they're saying three and a half meters, basically from the rear car all the way to the left. So that's quite a big of area right here that you need to be able to do this. So make sure you have the space to do this before you start getting too set up on this. We'll press continue, we have the room needed for this. First thing they're gonna ask you to do, and you'll see I have a couple tools on here that might help you out little couple tech tips for you right now. So we've got to get a distance of X from the back of the car of 168.3 centimeters. Well, what I'm going to, you can see there's a line going through the car. So what I like to do at this point is go ahead and get my plumb bob out, do the front, do the rear, and run a, char, uh, run a line all the way through and pull it back so I can get that straight line from the center line of the car all the way down to 168.3 centimeters. So that's why the plumb bob and some tape on the floor is one of the reasons I said this might help you out a little bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is mark that 168.3 centimeters, and then, then I'll come back over to do the second measurement in just a moment.
Your Mazda emblems, front and rear, are what you're going to use to determine the center line of the car. I use a piece of tape on the floor, mark where it is. I'll go do the rear one right now too. Get my center line. I've got my center line in my vehicle now, so what I'm actually gonna use is my chalk line here. I'm gonna tape it to the floor, throw it under the car, so I have my marks lined up, so I know exactly where a hundred, so when I come back, I'm straight line with the vehicle. Blind spot monitors are very precise on their measurements. So I wanna make sure I maintain the center line of this car. All the way back. So we need 168.3 from the back of the car once I establish our center line. I'm gonna stretch my chalk line back. I'm gonna line it up with the mark I made. With the plumb bob, I'm already on that front mark. So I have X set up right now after establishing a center line and I'm at 168.3 centimeters. So the next thing I need to do is 90 degrees over at 232.2 centimeters. And of course we need a 90 degree angle. So I'm gonna make sure I keep a 90 degree angle, go over to 232. And then once I have that, it says we can go ahead and move our reflector stand into this area right here. And you'll also see, hard to see right now, but it is pointing at the left rear of the bumper where your blind spot sensor is located. So I'll get that 232 real quick, and then I'll move my actual stand over. So we've got our reflector stand back in the corner there. Let's see what the next steps are gonna have us do. Next thing we're gonna need to do is go ahead and level out our reflector stand using the th adjusters on the bottom of the stand and taking a look at the bubble level that is actually attached to the stand as well. So I'll do that real quick. We will press continue now. And now we've got to get our distance set up on our reflector stand. We're going to place the, the distance laser in the vertical position. And we're going to get 65.3 centimeters from the floor. And also make sure that you're on the zero position as well on your stand. So we're going to have that in the zero position and we'll also have our height set up real quick. Our distance is set up. Let's go ahead and press continue. Asking us to turn the engine on. So it's not saying turn the ignition on, it says engine on. So I'm gonna start the vehicle real quick. You know, and before I press continue at this point, I'm gonna move back over there and remove this tray and all of this. I don't want any metal around here that could just skew the actual blind spot monitor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take the tablet back there and, and we'll 
finish this calibration. We've got our distance set up to 65.3 centimeters. Make sure that nobody enters the area during the calibration. Of course, don't turn off the scan tool and close all the doors. We're back behind our target right now. We'll press continue. And the calibration was successfully completed. So our calibration was successfully completed on the left side. If you were in a shop environment and did have to remove the fascia, you would do the right as well. We only demonstrated the left one today. If you can do the left, you can do the right. Last thing we're gonna go do now is test drive the vehicle and verify that the blind spot system is working as intended before we return it to the customer. Then I'll do my post scan and I'll have three different reports that I can provide to the customer. We're gonna have our pre-scan, our calibration report, and our post scan. If there's any other calibrations that you're looking to do, send me an email or shoot us a line over at Hunter and we'll try and get you one of those ADOS calibration procedures up next. But make sure to look around. We have a lot that are already out. To cover the ADOS, link in the DOS 3000. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.